Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be going over Blender and the basics of Blender. So when you start out Blender you're going to see basically the screen. It might look a little bit different depending on your version, but you press general, there you go, you're in. Alright, so first for me, this is an add-on I put in. I'm going to make it to where you can see the commands I'm typing in. So down here, if you ever get lost, you can just look over here where my mouse is and I should you should be able to see what I'm basically doing. So before we get started here, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to be talking about. So if you want to take notes or something, you can take this. These are some shortcuts here, all these. So first I'm going to go off with the layout. So how this works is in Blender, over here you have your toolbar. This allows you to edit objects. So this button over here allows you to move. This allows you to rotate. So you can just turn an object any which way on the XYZ coordinate. Um, you normally don't use this one because S is just more efficient. So you press S, scales it up. I press Control Z to read and go back essentially. So you can scale up, scale down. Um, this one, transform. It activates everything. I don't really use this one that much because I don't think it's super necessary most of the time because it has a lot of buttons that you can press. But essentially, if you don't want to press all those buttons, you can just move everything through here. Yeah, that's pretty much operating mode. So there's that. Up here you have your options to this is file to save pretty much to open files. Edit allows you to pretty much add add-ons or preferences. Render is rendering your image. Window is window and help are kind of just options slash help stuff. So you got layout to scripting. So all this is something that is pretty complex outside of the layout. Layout is just how you see your um, 3D model pretty much. Everything else is basically to support what this 3D model will look like. Over here you have your scenes. This is how you add objects in. And with that being said, I'll add in a sphere real quick just to show you. So you press Control A. So I did. Now you have a sphere. What this sphere is right now, so you see it over here highlighted. It highlights it over here as well. And if you click something over here, it'll highlight from here. And I'll highlight it. If you click something from here, it'll highlight it, and then also highlight over here. If you want to select multiple objects at once, you can do it from here. And press Shift, hold it down, select one, and then select the other one that you want to go down to. Or you can press one, and then press Control, and hold that down, and then left click something, and it'll skip over the ones that are in between. So you can just select the ones that you want, essentially. Another way of doing it is just dragging this uh, marquee looking tool and then it selects objects with whatever is inside of that and says left click and drag so that's not too hard speaking of that I'm going to also delete these so if you highlight something and you press X and then it'll bring up this menu you just click it boom done alright so now we got that how you hide something because I'm going to hide this real quick so you go over to this little eye icon and you just click it boom hidden all right, so if you press tab, it brings you into object mode, or edit mode, I mean, edit. Yeah, this is edit mode, my bad. You press tab because you can do it over here. You can go to object mode, bring it back to object mode, bring it into edit mode, but it is just highly efficient to get used to pressing tab. You just want to press tab. So you got vertices, which are the little points on the edges, which is just corners, essentially. You got, you press one is vertices, two is edges, and three is phases. So two is edges and it selects the edges like this. Three is phases. And when you work in Blender, you're gonna be working in squares a lot. So basically you wanna see this is a good thing is having a square. Technically Blender registers it as triangles. So if you split it in half, it's a triangle technically. So two triangles make a square. But ultimately you want it to be a square. So what happens is, is whenever you're in edit mode, you can press G, and it grabs it, you can move it around as shown before. You can scale it, but this time it's not scaling the entire object, it's just scaling what's selected. So now it's scaling this while proportionally editing it through these ones as well, which is pretty neat. Press I, it inserts it. So it takes this face and squishes it in. Then you press E again, and then you, well, you press E, and E extrudes it. So E basically takes whatever is selected and then moves it into a direction that you want it to go in. Which is pretty neat. So from here, let me just look at my sheet real quick. 
So if you want to, you can rotate this as well. So you see how I kind of warped this. You don't really want that most of the time. So if you want her, this goes straight down on the Y axis. You can press R and then Y. And it'll go down. And it'll be perfect to the Y axis. So that's something to keep in mind is if you wanted to make a very specific move, you can always press R and then XYZ and then it moves it. It's pretty neat. You can also do some other things with that, but I'm not getting into that right now. Um, pretty much that's all your hotkeys. So if you go over here, S is to scale, I is to insert, R is to rotate, E is to extrude, G is to grab. And I would make sure that you understand those and get used to those because those can be very helpful. So overall, that's pretty much it. Oh, I'll go over beveling because I think beveling is also super nice. So if you go to 2, which is edges, you mainly just bevel edges because this is from my experience where you're going to bevel a whole lot. So if you press Control B, it'll basically start rounding them out. And if you scroll up while you have Control B selected, you can basically make it really round like that. Pretty cool. Loop cuts add a bunch of um, edges in so you can cut it. What's kind of nice about this is if you go over here, now this is a little bit more advanced, I think, for someone just starting out, but if you go over here and you press, you hold Alt, it selects everything around here. So if I was to just select this, it wouldn't select in the back. But if you hold Alt down and then left click, it'll select this entire what's ever connected to it. So if you scale this outward, it'll kind of make a um, rounded type thing. And then if you press Control B, make it even more rounded like that and there you go now when it comes to sculpting and everything like that is totally different but as a whole the more faces you have the more things you can edit to make them look more detailed and that's why you want to add that in and it also makes things easier if you're adding a lot of detail in to have more faces so that's why loop cutting is pretty like a pretty big deal overall that's pretty much it for I think the basics um, Making stuff is a little bit harder because now I, I would go, I can make some tutorials in the future for sure. I will be doing that over making some basic chairs and like stuff like that. I'm making a game world right now, but if you want to look up just stuff to craft, I would do that. Maybe make some legs or something like that for a chair and then just make a very basic low poly chair. Something like that with those, what I just showed you. It's a, uh, it's fun. I think it's very hard starting out, but I think if you can get a hold of it, it is a fun thing to do. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this helps. I'll be making more videos in the future, and have a good day. Bye.